Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Soro Ramaphosa has thrown his weight behind South Africa's green hydrogen export ambitions, as well as the need to align South Africa's policies with the reality of a world that is now carbon constrained. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What did the President say about green hydrogen? Well, I think he's basically saying this is a really big opportunity for South Africa. We know that green hydrogen is, is a lot of hype around it and there's a lot of activity taking place in, in the whole world as countries look to decarbonize those hard to abate sectors. So we know electricity is the key way to uh, decarbonize uh, things like mobility, passenger uh, travel. But when it comes to marine freight, air, air travel, uh, steel, uh, chemicals, uh, fertilizers, and uh, also land freight, so long distance trucks. Uh, green hydrogen and the derivatives that come from green hydrogen, so in the case uh, of fuels like ammonia, like a green ethanol, um, a methanol, those sort of products, green steel, uh, this is where a, uh, a decarbonized product like green hydrogen comes from or plays a role. And really, this is where. Uh, you take renewable electricity, which South Africa is well placed to uh, produce because we've got uh, abundant uh, solar and wind resources, and therefore we will produce relatively cheaper renewable electricity. Take that, put it, uh, uh, use water, put it through an electrolyzer, and uh, split it into oxygen and hydrogen. So it's a, a, a clean hydrogen product. At the moment, most hydrogen. Uh, is uh, produced either mostly from um, the oil and gas industry. But we know in South Africa we have a huge hydrogen production that comes from coal. It's, the, it's really why Sasol is so carbon intensive. It, it gasifies the coal to produce hydrogen and then it puts it through that fissure troughs process to produce uh, transport fuels and chemicals. So we have a hydrogen tradition in South Africa, but it's a dirty hydrogen. So. Uh, the president is seeing this new opportunity that's arising as countries in Europe, uh, North America, Asia are looking for green hydrogen resources but don't have the triumvirate of wind solar land that South Africa has to produce it uh, cheaply. Obvi obviously there's also the water aspect and South Africa being a water scarce country has to look at that issue. But the, the, issue, the, the, the feeling is that uh, water is not a major constraint because one, as we retire our coal fleet, there's a lot of water that's going to become available uh, for other activities like agriculture and uh, hydrogen. But two, if you add uh, desalination to a, uh, an electrolysis fleet, say at the coast, it doesn't add massively to the cost of green hydrogen. The key trick here is to scale up in a way, much like we've done with solar and wind, to, pr to reduce the, the cost of elect electrolysis. That's the big binding constraint at the moment. It's not competitive with grey hydrogen, which comes from oil and gas and coal, uh, and blue hydrogen, which involves uh, making hydrogen and then uh, having carbon sequestration, uh, is also expensive. And that would be the other competitor. But really, the world really wants green hydrogen, and South Africa is a location to do that. And therefore, uh, tying our or hitching our wagon to that is important. And seeing it as an export opportunity is also important uh, because it's not just about decarbonizing South Africa's economy, it's about decarbonizing the world's economy. The President is particularly excited about the prospect of an export hub at Bukhubai. That's right. He mentioned a couple of initiatives, and we know there are a number of uh, projects around the Secunda area that Sassel's looking at. There's the, um, <coughs> there's the uh, hydrogen valley concept that Anglo-American and others are involved with stretching from uh, Limpopo in the north all the way down to Durban in the south, a corridor of uh, hydrogen sort of using the platinum uh, group metals complex in the north which feeds into the fuel cells that, uh, that are able to use the green hydrogen. Um, and then we have the, uh, a plan for a corridor basically where we'll have uh, f um, hydrogen fueling stations, etc. So that's the, uh, the other big project, but we know there are a number of initiatives around the country, very early days, but Sassel's a key player. But Bukhubai is um, a project that was, has been mooted for, for a while. Uh, the presidency mentioned it uh, much earlier in the year as a, as a high potential project. And now the, the president himself 
uh, is getting quite excited about Buhu Bay. It's on right in the no northern Cape on the border with Namibia, and uh, it's really, really a facing, uh, uh, export-facing port facing the big market of Europe. So uh, that would be the prime location. We have the wind and solar and land resources there, um, and then have massive amounts of uh, renewable electricity feeding into electrolyzers to produce uh, hydrogen. And I think to make this hydrogen exportable, hydrogen is a difficult product to export. More and more we're going to be looking at an industrial hub to, to convert that hydrogen into, into a saleable derivative. And in this case, ammonia has been mentioned, but definitely around that area, we've got obviously the Saldana steel plant that's been mothballed, and that could be converted to start using green hydrogen so we could start producing green steel for the world as well. So there's a lot of uh, excitement potentially around that. There has been a little bit of reticence from the Richterfeld community that feel they haven't been consulted. And I know that community's been quite put upon in the past. Uh, it's a diamond territory and it hasn't really, those diamond resources didn't really convert into community upliftment. And now there's concern, will hydrogen or this really the solar and wind resources be turned to account in a way that the community benefits. So there is some concern, but there's also a lot of excitement about this big hydrogen export hub that could potentially be developed uh, on South Africa's west coast. Ramaphosa sees partnership potential with Namibia for this. Yes, I think this is about hydrogen and SADC diplomacy. Namibia really has stolen a march on the hydrogen over South Africa. It's m much more advanced in many ways in its, to uh, in its uh, thinking around green hydrogen as a government. I think we do have the advantage of having Sassel, which is a big company that already handles a lot of hydrogen, already needs hydrogen for its uh, um, fissure troughs processes, and will like to shift from grey, very carbon heavy hydrogen, coal based hydrogen, increasingly uh, to green hydrogen, probably in, uh, sometime in the next decade. They, uh, that will be a big push with the pilot project starting to come uh, arise quite soon. I think there's a sustainable aviation fuel project that Sussel is working on. But really Namibia has been working on, they've got this uh, Southern Corridor Development Initiative and they've been working hard on this. They've got the link to Germany and Germany is going to be a big uh, uh, off taker of green hydrogen and green hydrogen derivatives. Uh, they've got similar to the Northern Cape right on that border similar land, wind and solar resources that are excellent and they really see this as a way of uh, changing the fortunes of the economy and uh, moving them up um, uh, the development status uh, ladder. So they, I think they've been a bit frustrated that South Africa hasn't really been co communicating their hydrogen plans. They've been asking for some communication on that. It seems the two presidents have finally met on the issue. And uh, I think the, the feeling is that rather cooperate, it's right in the same zone, ra rather not be competitors but partners on this, and that's easier said than done. I think Bukhubai has got this new impetus because Sassel has signed a memorandum of understanding to, be, to lead the, the feasibility study. But I mean, the Southern Corridor Development Initiatives already had an expression of interest process, it's already closed, and they're now about to start entering into a process of request for information, request for proposals, so really competitive. So Namibia is ahead uh, of this in this hydrogen game, but I think it's about hydrogen diplomacy. This is all about an in, a interconnected world. The hydrogen won't necessarily all be consumed, well, it won't be consumed in Southern Africa. It will be consumed in the rest of the world. So I think it's important that uh, the president so showed sensitivity that there's a, a, a neighbor that has major hydrogen plans of its own. The president also says green energy and decarbonisation should be embraced by South Africa. Yes, now this is uh, important because he's got an energy minister at the moment that's not singing from that same hymn sheet. But if you look at the decisions that cabinet and the president are making uh, around our trajectory, it's very much in an embracing of the green uh, energy opportunity, both in our electricity system um, and also increasingly it will also be in our energy system more generally. We can see that we've made some decisions around our refineries. We're, gonna, we're going for a clean fuel push that our refineries will not be able to meet, it looks like. So we're almost saying, nudging this transition towards more electrification, fuel cell vehicles, uh, uh, battery electric vehicles, we seem to be nudging in that direction. 
cabinet made this massive decision to endorse a very ambitious nationally determined contribution. That's our climate pledge to the United Nations ahead of COP. And we really uh, made a, a much more a positive uh, um, pledge to, to the United Nations than we did in 2015. And it basically aligns the economy uh, in this range um, of, uh, of decarbonisation to either meet the, uh, the, at the higher end of the range to meet the Paris goal of, of around two degrees uh, uh, temperature rise by the end of the century, or at the lower end that we align to the, the new ambition that's emerging and that's going to be pushed in Glasgow at the end of the year of 1.5. So the president sees this as an important uh, opportunity for South Africa, as we see with the green hydrogen. We know that our electricity system uh, has been very, become very shaky on coal. We've got an old fleet. And the good news is that uh, replacing that coal with uh, a, a cleaner system is now the least cost route. The issue is there's a lot of vested interest, and I think his energy minister, Gwede Mantash, is very much alive to that. So it's almost a bit of a good cop, bad cop routine that we've seen where there's uh, alliance partners that are, that are very skeptical of green energy, that have workers that are very strongly tied to the coal value chain, and uh, there's a lot to lose. So I think, but I think that routine is becoming a little bit tired, and I think it is be starting to cause confusion because South Africa uh, can't do this uh, on its own balance sheet. Eskom's broke. Government uh, has very uh, tightly constrained fiscal uh, uh, balance sheet of its own. We need to have foreign and domestic direct investment in the energy economy to unlock a one security of supply and electricity, but beyond that, the power to X opportunities, because you're going to have to overbuild uh, the renewable fleet to, to pr supply uh, stable electricity, you're going to have periods of the day where you're going to have just too much electricity that's basically free. And you need to embrace, therefore, the green hydrogen opportunity, the electric mobility opportunity. And the president, I think, has done that. He's crossed that Rubicon. We now need the, a whole of government approach. I think the good cop, bad cop routine, the trying to massage vested interests, I think is understandable given our coal dependence, but I think it's becoming tired and becoming a little bit confusing. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.